Yeah. It's a little faster. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Riggs Garage. Today I'm working on the D15B7 with a Z6 VTEC head mini-me swap. If you haven't seen the head swap video with all that information, go ahead and check out the link above. But this video, I'm going to be putting in the P28 ECU to control the VTEC on the head of this mini-me engine. It's a fun little build. Right now it's pretty fun to drive as it sits, but I'd like to get the VTEC engaging so I can have that variable valve timing that all the Honda boys love. So let's have a look at and see what we're going to do here. If you find this video helpful, hit that like button to help me with the YouTube algorithm so other people can see this video, and subscribe to Riggs Garage. I appreciate it. Okay, we're inside the car. One of the important things for you to know about the Mini-Me Swap is you can go ahead and modify your original ECU. I have a PO5 that's in the car right now running it. However, uh, I am running the P28 ECU. This is the VTEC engine ECU. Now, if you're digging in the junkyard and you actually happen to find one, you'll want to be able to identify it. Let's set it in my lap here. All right, so you're going to be able to identify it by this barcode here. It says P28-A01. Now, that A there means it was made in America, or for the American market at least, and the zero is going to indicate a manual transmission ECU. You need to have the manual transmission ECU to run a manual transmission car. Um, otherwise, that zero will be a five. The five indicates an automatic transmission. This is a manual transmission car, and I have zero indicating manual, so let's proceed with that. Also, this one has a date stamp I just noticed. August 11, 93. That's kind of cool. This is a 93 Civic. First thing I'm going to do is put the new ECU in and make sure the car is going to run with it. I think I'm going to disconnect the battery first just for fun to be safe with electronics. I have had the unanswered question in my head, will the car run with the P28 ECU and the VTEC not hooked up? I assume that yes, it definitely will. It would probably run a lot better because it probably has a more aggressive fuel map to run a slightly um, bigger intake manifold for the Z6 engine, which I have in the engine, and a, um, a better flowing D16 head and a little bit bigger cam. This is an EG Civic. Uh, here's how you access the computer. It sits right back in here. I'm going to go ahead and pull this panel down. Not panel, that's a carpet. Pull the carpet down a little bit. And right here we see the P06 ECU, identified right here on the barcode. It's got 10 millimeter bolts. One, two, three, four. Let's get those out. And make sure you drop it down under the carpet. I'm gonna unplug it. This is pushing the tab down and working it up carefully. And we're free. I'm going to plug my P28 in now. Make sure the car is going to run. Will it run? All right. We're running, and we have a check engine light on. That does not surprise me. We'll see if it goes away. I know it's hard to believe, but this is actually the first time I've ever seen the check engine light on in this car. It just works really well. So I'm gonna drive it around now, and I'm gonna see if it acts any different with the new mapping that is in the P28 stock computer. This is an untuned, unchipped stock P28. Give it a couple rips here. It's not limp moding or anything weird. That's cool.
it seems uh, maybe slightly faster. I don't know. It's, it's hard to quantify. I'm going to say that it feels almost the same as the PO6 computer. Now if I drove it for a few days, maybe the difference would be more stark. All right, I verified that the P28 will control the non-VTEC engine. Um, it's just not getting VTEC, obviously. So that answers kind of the, uh, the forum posts that are asking, hey, I don't have VTEC yet, but can I run a P28 computer? The answer is yes, you do get a check engine light. Uh, the scientist in me really wants to uh, grab that code, but I'm gonna move on because I'm almost out of daylight. Here are the wiring basics real quick. I'm going to refer to a couple different pins on the ECU harness. I am going to pop up a um, harness wiring diagram in this video. But the basics are, we have the solenoid oil pressure. There's this clip here. I have links to these clips. You can get them from the junkyard or I got them new off Amazon. You can see my link in the description below. We've got a black wire and a red wire. The black wire is going to go to ground which reaches perfectly to the thermostat ground right here. So there's a bolt for the thermostat that is a pre-established factory ground. Then the red wire is going to go to pin D6 on your ECU wiring harness. Then we have the VTEC solenoid. This green wire is going to go to pin A4. Now I'm back in the car here, um, you're going to need ECU pins. These are from the wiring harness. You can get these from the junkyard by clipping off, lopping off a chunk of this harness at the, uh, at the junkyard, and that might make somebody mad, but it does work. There are two different sizes of pins, big ones and small ones. Hi, Dad. Here's what they look like. That's the small one. And this is the big one. It's got a bigger end. I'm going to go ahead and solder and heat shrink uh, the wires together to the new connections. So there's my heat shrink, put that on before you solder. And yes, if you're wondering, this is my son's wood burning gun. If you were wondering if a wood burning gun would work for soldering, we're about to find out. My soldering iron is long lost, I don't do wiring very often. A heat gun also works well if you have one. Alright, both of these are soldered and heat shrunk. Two long lengths of wire that I'm going to run through the firewall from under the engine bay. On this end of the ground, this is going to go to the thermostat housing. I ended up pulling this plug out of the firewall, and I'll make a little slit in it and run both wires through it. I'm going to put some silicone around them to seal it up so I don't have any moisture from the engine bay if I wash it in there or if it's raining. Now I'll show you where that plug comes out in the cabin. If you locate your air conditioner drain line, here let me light it for you better, if you locate that line right there, um, you just go straight above it uh, about five inches and you'll find that hole that I just unplugged. I want to run those wires right up above the carpet out of the way of any passenger feet, and probably behind the carpet, and then straight to the ECU. Alright, so what I'm doing, I've got the blue wire from the VTEC solenoid, and that goes to A4. So I'll pop up that diagram now, and you can see where A4 is. Now A4 is going to use the larger pin, and you can verify that by taking a small and a large and finding Finding A4, 
on your pins and simply sliding it on there and it fits. That's cool. This is a larger pin. If you take a smaller pin, it's only going to fit on the smaller pins on the ECU. I just use a screwdriver to pry open this little plastic flap here. Now you can notice uh, A4 here is open and ready for my VTEC solenoid. You can also notice that the orientation of the clips, the bottom of the clip, or the pin, sorry, the bottom of the pin is oriented downward. I stripped the end of my wire. Now I'm just going to put the, I'm going to lay the wire down in here and I'm going to crimp this over. If you need more help with the orientation, the little tab slash ramp thing inside of there is going to be on the bottom. Then pop him in. Cool. Now it's locked in. And that is A4 done. Clip this back up. All right, I just pulled my VTEC pressure pressure switch wire through, and I'm going to run that to D6. For D6. So I'm going to check to see what size that pin is, and we'll make it happen. All right, VTEC pressure switch into D6. Snapped. Did you hear the snap? I heard the snap. Now I'm gonna plug my ECU in. We're gonna run it before we button everything up. Just to make sure connections are good and we do have VTEC engaging. And finally, don't forget to connect your ground down here to the thermostat housing. While you have this 10 millimeter bolt off, now's a good time to clean that ground really well because it is the problem of many an issue. Sorry for the film quality, I just fired it up for the first time. Um, my gauge lights are broken, the switch is gone, but there's no check engine light now that the VTEC is wired up, so that's a good start. Let's go see how it rips. Okay, I'm out doing a test drive here in the daylight. Um, I don't have a tachometer, so I can't quite see when VTEC is engaging. So I'm warming the engine up now, and we'll give it a little, a little rip up here. I drove around a little last night, but the film was really crappy, so I have a little feel of what we got. Um, so it does rip a decent amount more in the high RPM ranges, between like four and seven. Um, it, it smells like it's a little rich up top. I don't know, but you can definitely tell VTEC's engaging there. Um, it gives it more rip, and uh, it's not impressively powerful or anything. We're talking about a factory, you know, 1.5 liter that has variable valve timing now and a little bit better computer and a little bit better uh, exhaust and intake manifold. So I'm not expecting crazy things. It's a stock cam, a stock tune engine. Um, but really, I think this, this swap will, will give you a little more pep. It's not crazy. I wouldn't have done it if I didn't need uh, a head anyway on the car, to be honest with you. Uh, I think combined with the right cam and a turbo, obviously this, this Mini Me swap is going to be a really big upgrade. So thanks for watching Riggs Garage. Uh, if you found this video helpful or have questions, hit me up in the comments below. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me, helps me spread the videos around. Appreciate it.